welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our very first episode of Influencer 101. You are tuned in to CMTV, and we are your people for all things, anything to do with influencing, entertainment, and anything that you need to know about the media industry. I'm not chilling alone today. Firstly, let me introduce myself. How rude of <laughs> myself to do that. I am Karabo, aka Miss K officially. We are social media people, so do make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. You will find us as CMTVSA. You can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We are still a little bit old school in terms of Facebook, <laughs> but whatever platform that suits you, do make sure to follow us. Okay, so the name of the show is, you know, it sort of tells you what it is that we do here. It is called Influencer 101. So we give you all things influential in terms of the influences, what they influence, the brands that they influence, and how is it that they got into that career? Because it has become a career mm -hmm. nowadays. I mean, we've moved from people just being models, actresses, all of those things in terms and moved into social media platforms. And influencing is one of those major careers that everyone wants to go into. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone today. I am chilling with Zuki. I told you we are going big. <laughs> we 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 had to we had to launch it like a proper. Like this beautiful lady has 60,000, 60, ne? not 6,000, not 600, no, 60. That, that, you know what? You know what? Let me not even go into that. She's going to be the one to tell us all about that. Mm -hmm. How are you, Zuki? I'm well, thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Please tell us about yourself. I hate this question. I I'm know. I know. It's so cliche, right? <laughs> Remember, like, mix of days and you chat to a guy you don't know and they're like, please tell me about yourself. When you're, you're like, still you're sweet wah. lips, you want to Thank you. But I'm Zuki. Um, mm -hmm. Zuki Lamani. I'm originally born, uh, I was born, rather, in the Eastern Cape, King Williamstown. Not so many people know that. They think I'm from Cape Town. But I'm born, I was born and bred in Eastern Cape, King Williamstown. And then I moved to Cape Town. So now I'm Cape Town based. I live in Cape Town. I study in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And I work in Cape Town. Um, I don't know what to say about myself. Um, I think more than anything, um, I'm an influential person. More than an, like an influencer. Like I've always been influential. Like I didn't become influential because now there's this new career called influencer. I was always influential in my friendship group to my family in, in everywhere I went to. Like, you know, I would influence. That is actually my my first question after mm -hmm. the, you know, um, who are you? Um, had you always wanted to be an influencer? Like you say, you've always been an influential person, but in what aspect have you always been influential? Has it, have you always been a social media mm -hmm. person? Have you always been a person that's been out there or is it with people that meet you and know you? Because you know some people mm -hmm. with strangers, mm -hmm. they're completely awkward. But when it comes to people that they know, they're out there. They're so out there. in what space would you have considered yourself influential? Do you know, funny enough, for me, growing up, I wanted to be an accountant. Oh, know? nice, because, girl. And that was because, not because I wanted to be an accountant, but because I wanted, you know, a career that's like rigid, that's reputable, that mm. everybody knows, like a lawyer, an accountant, whatever. And then I, I realized that I actually want to be a comedian because I think I'm hella a funny. <laughs> and then, you know, they would laugh at me. I remember in primary school when I told my teacher, Mr. Fansman, but Sana, I want to be a comedian. And he was like, Zuki, you're going to need to t um, change your career choice. And, you know, I couldn't be a comedian. Then, you know, as I grew, I then got into social media. And, right. you know, I just using social media as a normal person, like as a way of interacting. And, you know, I found a way in where I could, you know, communicate my personality onto social media. So social media is kind of like a medium. Mm. There's me, there's social media, and there's, there's me, social media, and then the audience. You know what I mean? I so do. how I communicate my personality to the audience is through social media. So that's how I became like an influencer. So when you initially went onto social media, was the intention to influence or was it just to show Not your life all. and your personality? Not at all. I, I never thought, you know, I'd be an influencer. Cause I didn't even know. I mean, growing up, there was no, there were no influencers. There were just celebrities, you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. Okay, I would, you know, be known as an influencer today. I knew very well that I was going to be on TV one day. <laughs> okay, I knew girl. very well that I was going to be like Manang. I was going to be there, but I didn't know in like which way, which mm -hmm. route I was going to take. And funny enough, like, you know, influencing came and you know, it 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 became you know the source of my direction in terms of this. Um, 
career so, field. So with regards to your, your social media or your influencer career, if we should call it that now, did you, was your first influencing job a collaboration? Did you reach out? Did they reach out? What happened? Walk so, us through that journey, that the journey. first time. So it was in 2017. Um, it was my first year at the University of Cape Town. And, um, you know, I, I had always been, I, I could say famous, like in, like at school, like in high right. school, everybody knew Zuki. In primary school, everybody knew Zuki. So I got into university. University is big, so not everybody knew Zuki. That's but, true. you know, on social media, a couple of people knew me. And then I remember there was a time, I think it was around September um, 2017, I reached 3,000 followers. And 3,000 followers at the time was like the benchmark, you know, mm. on Twitter. Like, if you have 3K followers, you are a Twilib. Mm. You know, I reached 3K followers, but I was still, you know, trailing on, you know, Instagram. I was, uh, you know, moving a bit slow on Instagram. And then this hair brand called Diamond Realty Hair um, approached me, but they wanted me to promote their brand mostly on Instagram right. and not on Twitter because you know people people on twitter are more about typing and you know more conversational That's than true. instagram instagram is more pictures more imagery mm. so you know i got that and then i got another gig where i promoted like bags and makeup and makeup brushes All so right. those were my first two gigs so they approached me both of them both of the clients approached me and then going forward you know i had a couple of gigs um where i approached people and then they approached me as well yeah so for someone that doesn't know what influencing is, I'm sure they've all, everyone has heard mm -hmm. about influencing, but if someone doesn't know like what it entails, how would you explain influencing? Do you know, for me, I don't think there's, um, well, for me, I don't have, uh, you know, a definition for it mm -hmm. because I always, uh, for me, I always say I'm an influencer because I'm influential. Okay. I don't know if all influencers are influential, mm -hmm. but I know for a fact that I'm very, very influential. So I don't want to give out a definition and say influencers are people that are influential because mm. a person sitting there might say, not, um, but this influencer is not necessarily influential That's to true. me. She just has a high following. For me, I don't have, I mean, there are influencers with a higher following than I do. You know what I mean? But for me, it's not even about the following. It's about like you know the person doing the thing you know are you actually influential would i have bought this thing if you had 600 followers do you know what i mean what's your way of communicating to the audience and i think for me i, I you know i can't do that because i was able to do that with 3000 followers i didn't need to have 70000 followers 100000 followers to be able to you know communicate my influence so with regards to um this conversation uh -huh. we're going to carry on with this conversation however we do need to pay the bills okay. so we do need to take a break because despite the fact that we have influencers on the show we are here to influence you <laughs> and make sure that you decide if you are if you felt feel compelled or led to pursue this career we need to pay some bills right now but we'll be back and carry on the conversation with zuki lamani her name though hello, hello. <laughs> we'll be back after the break Welcome back. I hope you got yourself some snacks and something to drink because that's what we're doing here in studio. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you what we're drinking. Maybe you can <laughs> guess, you know, comment and tell us what you think we are having. But on that note, as we carry on the conversation with Zuki, you know, Zuki, with social media, for some people, it's difficult mm -hmm. in terms of starting, in terms mm -hmm. of what content to, mm -hmm. to put up. What, is, what are some of the challenges you experienced when you started? Um, because I didn't, my, you know, my initial plan was not to become an influencer. I don't think I noted any challenges, you know, right. I was just a normal person on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if I had started, you know, this year, for instance, and said, okay, this year I want to be an influencer, I would feel, you know, a bit challenged because, I mean, there are, uh, there are a lot of, like, you know, competitors, you know, on the side, and there's a lot that I need to do. There's already someone creating kind of a similar content to, to what I'm putting out. So I think those would be the challenges, potentially, if you would want to start. But I think because I didn't start with that intention, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really pay mind to, to the challenges because I I was just a normal person and my followers grew because you know i'm funny i communicate you know funny content and people liked that so i i think yeah i, I can't recall any challenges saying that oh my god i'm so stressed my yeah. social media is taking so long to go because that was not my intention that's not what i wanted to do 
So does your family support what you do now? They love it. They love it. I think because my family also think that I'm flippin' funny, <laughs> I think they also, you know, I think they, they, they really love the fact that I've found a platform to kind of like express the, you know, that part of me, mm. you know what I mean? Because I can't only be funny to them, you know what I mean? Because they can definitely sit here and attest that, ah, she's so funny, she's so hilarious, she's such, a, she's such a vibe, but how then do I tell that to the whole world, you know? And influencing and, uh, you know, social media was kind of like the bridge in that, you know, little gap. So with, with that being said, do you plan what you put on social media? Or has it changed from when you started to, to what it is now? I it mean, definitely given has the changed. That, I mean, my know. social media, though, is not curated. Like, my Instagram is not curated. I don't sit there and have, like, a color scheme that today I'm posting yellow and tomorrow I'm posting pink. So whatever's happening, I'm posting pink. But, I mean, it's planned in a sense that um, when brands, because brands can, you know, request certain things like, okay, can you post at a certain time? Um, can you start with this post? I mean, that is some sort of planning to a certain degree. But... Um, I think, yeah, do you know what I mean? But I it's do. not planned in the sense where I plan this week, I'm posting only three photos. Tomorrow, I'm posting only four. It's not planned, in the, it's not curated, but I mean, I mean, I do plan to a certain degree. So has it shifted from when you started to where you are now? So, or, or, or has it shifted based on, like you say, the brands? But when you decide to post in your own right, do you do you plan around that or is it just you being Absolutely you? not. I can post any time. I if I feel like I'm pretty and I think I'm also like, you know, because you know, as a normal person, I think your characteristics, like as a general person, play a role in everything that you do. That's so true. if you are a patient person, we, that will reflect at work. You know, if you are an impatient person, that will reflect at work. Any type of work that you do, that will reflect in your relationships and your friendships, etc. So I think for me, I'm because I'm impatient, you know, it kind of like reflects in my work because if I take a nice photo like I took a picture today I posted it now yes. I, I, like I'm not that patient I can't wait <laughs> that long like I, I just want to get it out there you know what I mean so I think yeah yeah that's that's how it is so do you think someone can make a career out of being I mean there are people who have careers out of being would you make a career out definitely of it? definitely but um you know as as I've said before I'm a student mm. um I study linguistics English and right. um media and writing so i think because I, I love working i think more than anything even the fact that like influencer for me is working like i love working i love doing something i would be very bored i usually sit and say i want to be a housewife and then deep inside i don't want to be a housewife i would never mm. never cope with just sitting taking care of kids and taking care of the home i want to be out there i want to be doing something i want to be active because that's part of you know who i am so i you know i i, I would make a career out of it do you think do you think the market is receptive of influence? Absolutely. I think you know influencers have changed, you know, the digital market uh digital market space yes. like it has completely changed i mean as much as people watch tv people i could say that um you know a lot of young people now watch youtube more than they watch That's tv true. so and they watch youtube because they want to consume content creation there there are people who sit and plan content like omihlali ndamase mm -hmm. for people to consume and there are people who are actively making sure that i do not miss a omihlali ndamase video i need to watch it you know and, and back then i would say i wouldn't miss generations at 8 That's you know true. but now mm -hmm. the, the nowadays th that whole thing has changed you know we're more excited about youtube videos we're more excited about zuki lama IG live videos, you know, we're more excited about those things, except, like instead of you know TV. Mm. So when you do decide to go live, do you do you choose to go live at any point in time, or Absolutely. is it when you? creating content for a brand that you work with. Absolutely. I think if you go on my Instagram, you will know that I go live anywhere. First of all, anytime, anyhow. How, like I go live with my plates looking <laughs> offside. You know what I mean? Like mm. I don't even sit and wear a wig. Like if my wig is too far, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I, I never live videos are what are the one thing that I do not plan like at all. Like I can if, if I'm thinking of something funny. Best believe it's if it's if it's 11 p.m. I'll go live and tell people yo I've thought of this joke and I think you guys need to hear it. You know what I mean? So I never plan my live videos. I mean I've done I've collaborated with brands on live videos, but All in right. terms of um, but like not so many brands, not so many brands on live videos. Yeah. And um, what are some of the brands that you are currently working with that when you got the message or the DM you were like O M G. 
currently working with or have worked with? Both. Okay, so... I've worked with, um, I think one of the brands that, you know, I enjoyed working with was definitely TFG. Right. Um, I've worked with Fresh Stop. I've worked with um, Handy Andy, which was pretty cool because, yeah, you know, cleaning and me. Right. <laughs> that was cool. I've worked oh. with Netflix. I've always oh, wanted to wow. work with Netflix. I've worked with Netflix. I've worked with um, Showmax, with Duma Collective. Um, I mean, there's a couple of brands. I'm working with FNB right now. Oh, nice. And I've worked with Lannister, which is an international brand. I've also worked with Foyo, which is also an international brand. So I've worked with a couple of brands, Rans Cape Town, and so many things. Like, I've done quite a couple of things in my career. And these are mostly brands that approach you. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think the, the one brand that I approached, and I was sitting like this, like, you just need to read my proposal. <laughs> you just need to see this, was Netflix, and I've got that deal. And that was, but most of the others that I've just named now, they've approached me. But Netflix and I, you know, I sat, called someone a friend of mine who has a digital company and i called her i was like babe listen i need you to help me write a proposal to netflix i need them to see that i'm very serious about working with them because first of all i love netflix and second of all i think i could bring you know a, a certain type of audience to netflix you know and i did that you know i enjoyed i watched one of their movies i um i did a review and it was amazing what what was it about netflix that made you want to work with Do you know why? I worked with Lifetime Movies, which is also another brand, yes. uh, in December, I think. And um, they told me that, oh, uh, like it was not anything planned. Like they approached me, they're like, okay, we want you to watch this movie and we want you to give us a review of the movie, you know, on a live video, like how you do it. I did that like on Lifetime Movies. And it was amazing. Like, I didn't think that I would do, I would do, I would give a review so well. It was very authentic, not planned, not premeditated. It was absolutely amazing and then after I, I i thought okay i think this is my stream i think i enjoy telling stories i think i enjoy mm. you know talking about movies and that was when i thought netflix because i also love i've subscribed to netflix I, you know like netflix would be best relatable to this certain type of thing that i want to do and that's when i um, approached them so we're going to carry on the next the netflix conversation after the break because right. i'm i'm curious because <laughs> i'd like to think i'm a netflix person <laughs> but i'm curious as to where you would start like what's, How, what's what the, you, yes yeah. and the state of mind regarding the presentation yeah, yeah, yeah. that or that you'd send to netflix yeah. but we're going to take a break right now after the break she will tell us more so if you're interested in netflix or show max or what's the other one amazon prime lifetime video you know you know <laughs> maybe we could get a little help or advice from zuki Money. We're about to take a break. On that note, catch us after the break. And don't forget to get your drink and also guess what we drink. And we are back. You are still chilling with me, Miss K and Zuki Lamani. I know the name just sounds so, you know, <laughs> hip hop stories. Like, right? <laughs> you know, girl, maybe you should go into hip hop. Just throw uh, some. No, bars. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We are still chilling, and you are still tuned into Influencer 101 on CMTV SA. Make sure that you follow us on all of our social media platforms so that you can get more of our content on a weekly basis because we want to make sure that you are clued up on everything and anything to do with social media as we carry on the conversation zuki you were telling us about when you wrote to netflix, netflix. what is it that you said and and you did tell us why netflix i mean you love netflix you watch netflix you subscribe to yeah. Netflix. but what did you say in your in your in your in proposal. my proposal do you know let me tell you something about writing because i study english i study linguistics Hello. as well mm -hmm. um, and i'm a uct yeah. student let me tell you something about writing when you're writing something they always say reference so yes. for your writing to be good writing you need to reference you need to show them this is the content that i'm bringing to you and this is what i'm referencing even in cvs you need yes. to reference you need to That's put a, a reference number so i think what helps is when you give someone something and you also give them a reference you know what i mean so i wrote to Netflix that this is my idea. This is what I would like to bring to you. And this is what I've done before, you know, that's relatable to this. So 
I can do this. You know, I'm showing them my capabilities that I'm able to do this. I'm showing, would you be interested in doing this with me? So I think it's very, very important that, um, you know, we get into the, uh, you know, the habit of referencing, the habit of, you know, putting yourself out there and, you know, giving yourself and not being shy and not saying, I, I want to do this, but not being sure, being confident in your proposal that this is what I want to do. This is the return that I think I will bring because in my previous campaign, this is the return that I, I brought. So I think I can even bring more for you because you are such a bigger platform you know what i mean so i think um that's what made me um you know be inspired and you know be confident in writing to netflix and being confident as well in knowing that they will receive me well so with regards to the scope of social media and how it's changed from when you started and where it is right now would you suggest that someone that wants to go into influencing they get a mentor would you did you get a mentor would you get a mentor? Would you mentor? I know I'm asking so many yeah, questions. Yeah, no, all no worries. I get you. Um, I didn't get a personal mentor, like someone that sat with me and said, okay, I'm mentoring you. This is yes. what you should do. I, I kind of like winged it, you know, I kind of like went with it and also drawing inspiration from icons like Wunang. Wunang's my everything. I love her. And, you know, I, I've always drawn inspiration from her and looking at her. And then, you know, even younger people like Kumi Salinda Masi mm. now, you know, drew inspiration from, from her and my friends, Om Shai, how they deal with, you know, being public figures. You know what I mean? So I think, um, you know, um, that's how I did it. I didn't get a personal mentor. I didn't have someone to tell me, Zukanya mm. Yenzakanji. What I did was look for inspiration. These are women related to myself. Is You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Would you, if someone wrote to you and asked for you to be their mentor? They have. Okay, so would you did no, you take up that role? No. Why? And the reason why I didn't do it, I, I feel like, first of all, I don't like committing myself in things that I know I won't have time for. No. You know what I mean? Because I know that I might be able to help you. I mean, I always help my, my followers when they ask me. I always play that game on Instagram stories, ask me a question, and then they mm -hmm. ask me a question. I always respond, you know, with, you know, answers. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think uh, for me, that's where it ends. You know, I don't want to take it further because, um, you know, there's things like entitlement where people will need me now to yes, be, you know, true. mentor them every time, show them everything, be part of everything that I do. And so I think, you know, as much as I'm trying to help, I'm also trying to, you know, um, just, um, you know, um, lessen the access. You know what I mean? Mm. As much as I am trying to give myself to people, but also it's very important to create a boundary so that people don't, you know, cross and people don't, you know, um, um, kind of like ignore um, your, um, you know, your boundaries. So, um, with regard, obviously, you're a brand now. Mm -hmm. You're Zuki Lamani. Are there certain brands that you wouldn't work with because they don't align with your values Absolutely. and who you are? Absolutely. Um, I think, um, but this is not saying I wouldn't work with them, but I, I said to, you know, a friend of mine that I was chatting to, I want to start working with brands that will make me talk because I'm a talker. Like I talk a lot. Like I can talk. I believe in talking. I, I want to work with brands. Like I recently worked with, um, I forgot to uh, mention when I was mentioning brands, Telcom. We did an oh. absolutely amazing ad where they let me be my, my uh, myself. They yes. gave me freedom of content creation. When I spoke, I used Vernag. I spoke like how I usually speak. Yes. And it was such an, absolutely perfect ad and i think i want to work with brands like that the mm -hmm. brands that will make me do that type of thing like you know I, as much as you know i am into beauty i want to look beautiful yes. i want to look nice yes you know but like but like makeup brands aren't really you know the, my niche but like um i mean i can work with them but i said i want to build my brand more into brands that will make me be the active zuki lamani you know what i mean that makes sense that makes a lot of sense so with when it comes to like like you say there are certain brands that you wouldn't work with because you you feel that you're not able to express yourself fully do you do you say no to those brands absolutely or, so you would absolutely i think it's very very respectful that when somebody sends you an email mm. um or a proposal asking to work with you i think it's very very important because that's what i re um i expect from brands when i send them an email mm. if they feel like um they don't have space for influencers or they're not looking into working with influencers that they say you know yes, that response means a lot that they say so that I know that I'm I must look at another thing you know um so I always say when a brand approaches me and I don't want to work with them or we don't our brands don't align I definitely definitely do let them know that hello um thank you for sending me this um I would be an honor to work with you but at the moment I'm not currently um, looking into working with such a brand um you know the brand uh, brand alignment is not there yeah. so yeah 
So you're a full-time student. Yes. Is there ever a time when you're not working with a brand where you seek to work with a brand? Or are you okay when it's not happening, when you're not brand collaborating? Are you fine with just being Zuki, the student at UCT and not the brand or the influencer? I mean, um, to a certain degree. I mean, um, there are times where I pull off from social media. So I will go off you know purposefully you know intentionally because i want to focus on something else you know and there are times where i'm like oh i would love to work with the brand because also another thing that we have to remember and be realistic about is the fact that this career makes money we make That's money true. out of it so you know the, the the absence of brands the absence of collaborations you know you feel it because there's no you know money there's no flow cash flow you know what i mean so sometimes the broken from my age would have been <laughs> nice to have been yeah. collaborated you know awaiting some money you you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I do feel it. I do feel it. And we know how how brutal social media can Absolutely. be. Absolutely. How how do you then deal? Let's just say you live. Mm -hmm. Because it's not all the time that you can plan your response. Mm. You know, if someone's commenting, you can plan your response that you know what, I choose not to respond or I choose to respond in this manner. But now here you are, you are live, you are influencing a brand and someone's like Hey, but when you talk too much mm. or you're this. They say or, that they do that. Yeah, so how do, how do you deal with that? Do you choose to respond to that? Do you choose to continue with It depends on my mood. I think it depends on my mood. Um, I, I, like, I'm a very, like, I, I don't know. It depends on my mood. Mm. If I want to, I will respond to you. Like, I will give you a response. Like, you will get a response. And if I don't feel like it, if I feel like I'm talking about something else and I, I can't attend to this right now, I'll just remove you off, um, off the live. But if I'm genuinely just chatting to, you know, people on the live and then someone comes with funny questions or funny statements i will respond to them so what, what what do you mean in terms of your mood so does the severity of the response change based on how you are feeling no i think when i'm what i mean with mood is if i'm working or i'm doing a serious life maybe talking about something like mental health yes and then someone comes and says something funny i know that there are people who are genuinely listening yes. to this like mm -hmm. they want to know about mental health they want to be helped and for me, it would be unfair for me to pause that and that's focus true. on, you know, the person that's coming with funny things. Mm. But if I'm just talking about I'm a daughter or yeah. anything, you know, the things that I like talking about, and then someone comes and says something funny, I'll respond to them because can be the topic at the moment is not of high priority, yes. you know, and I will definitely respond to them. So if I am sitting at home watching and I'm like, I want to try this, I want to be an influencer. What advice would you give to them? Where would where where's a great place to start? Because I think starting is always the problem. I wouldn't advise them. I would ask them why. You know, I, I think the question is why why do you want to do it? Because they want to make money. They want to why why what can, what can you bring to the table? Cuz I think right. what's also important is the fact that about content creation there must be some sort of content that you you know you give consistently you can't just be an influencer because you're going to do everything once you don't find you know your purpose in this career once you don't find your niche it becomes very hard for people to relate to you mm -hmm. but for me people relate to me very easily because they know that my content is funny i like joking i like lifestyle and that's my content it's not anybody else's content you know what i mean and i think it's very important to know why you're doing this thing before you actually do, before you start doing it mm -hmm. ask yourself why am i doing it you know what am i going to give to people mm -hmm. you know what i mean how are people going to receive that mm -hmm. you can't just decide i'm trying to fund the makeup do you actually feel like you know you makeup enhances you mm -hmm. makeup makes you feel you know what i mean I yeah do. i understand that and it's 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 so profound that you say that because i think with influencing people think it's uh, to a certain extent because they don't understand it, they think it's such a shallow thing. Exactly. And and when you now say that you must understand why you do it, it makes sense because your questions are relevant. Exactly. Do you want to make money? Why do you want to make money? What are you bringing to the table? So people should think of it as a typical relationship. Exactly. Where you must bring something to the table as much as you want to be Reciprocal. Friends. It must be reciprocal. Absolutely. And I love that. Zuki, oh my God, I can't believe we're out of time. Eh? <laughs> I'm like, hello. I, I'm enjoying this as well. I am also enjoying this. And I've got so many more questions to ask you but because we are out of time right. and you need to get going because oh, yes. you have a busy lifestyle i mean i mean <laughs> and i'm in another city so. <laughs> and she is in another city she came all the way from cape town thank you so much thank for you for having thank me you so thank much you for thank you for having so me. where can people get a hold of you those that are not already following you i don't know why though but no. 
Come same. on. If same. they are not following you, I, I think they're not on social media. But I anyway, know, but probably. where can they find you on your social media platforms? If they want to ask you questions, if they want to collaborate with you, where do people find you and on what social media okay, platforms? Cool. They can find me on Instagram. Um, that's the chief platform that I'm using for my social media now. Right. Zuki underscore Lamani. I mean, I'm trying out TikTok. TikTok as well, Zuki underscore yes. Lamani. And for any brand collaborations, just email Lamani at gmail.com. It is on my Instagram. But my platform platforms are instagram mainly i'm trying out tiktok but yeah that's so you're not better. on facebook not on twitter um no nah. we'll just leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> zuki lamani thank you so much thank for joining us much. it's been a pleasure having you i hope people being, yeah. were able to guess what it is that we were having does it taste it's good? Cheers, do, you, do you like that? <laughs> it? Tastes do good. you like what we have? It is very nice. <laughs> I love it. I think Thank it's you. amazing. So let us know what you think we are having. But not only that, make sure that you tune in to our next episode. We're going to have another influential person that is doing amazing things. Zuki, you are amazing. You, you are a beautiful. You too. Beautiful. Oh, Just even to say that, girl. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You are a beautiful person. And I wish you all the best in Thank this you career. And you've done so well for yourself. So I hope you grow and we're going to invite you to the show soon okay. again okay. because we are just those people that, <laughs> you know, content is a thing for us. Thank you. So do make sure that you tune into our next episode. Thank you so much from me, Miss K and Influencer 101. Do remember to follow us on all of our social media platforms, CMTVSA, and make sure that you inbox us if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions. Please make sure that you get in touch with us. And from our side, ciao. Ciao.